Hey, welcome back everybody. It's really good to see you again today. You know, I'm really excited uh, for today. So today we're going to be talking about maps, you know, because they have a ton of colors and symbols and squiggly lines all over the place, which can make them really difficult to read and to truly understand what they are. So today we're going to look at maps. We're going to look at marginal information, symbols, colors, and grids. And I bet if you hang out long enough, you're going to pick up something that you may not have known before. Hey, and if you like the content of the video, uh, and what we're talking about here, hit the like and the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on future content. So what is a map? To put it simply, a map is nothing more than a graphical representation of a portion of the Earth's surface as seen from above. And so cartographers are going to use symbols, colors, and labels to represent the things that are actually on the ground. They're going to show ground features, populated areas, man-made structures, natural features. It's going to indicate variations of elevation as well as vegetation. And using a map, we can figure out what's on the ground out in the world around us and how to plan a route to get from A to B. And so there are two primary agencies that are charged with making, producing, and distributing topographical maps. And so the NGA, or the National Geospatial Agency, their charge is to actually produce the maps. And then you have the USGS, or United States Geological Service, and their job is to actually push topographical maps out to the public. And of course, in addition, man, there are tons of other maps that we can get our hands on, right? We got atlases, road maps, travel maps, and they all share very similar things in common. So regardless of the type of map that you're gonna be looking at, what we're gonna talk about today will help you out. And so regardless of who actually makes and distributes these maps, they all contain marginal information to enable you, the user, to better use and understand what's on the map itself. All right, so without further ado, let's start taking a look at some of this marginal information we can find. I got a couple maps here with me and I'll show you some of the differences that they have. Uh, one is up here in Washington State and the other one is down in Texas. And so we're gonna start up here in the top left-hand corner and we see one to 50,000 here and one to 50,000 up in Washington. And so what that is, it's the actual scale of the map telling us that one inch uh, on the map equals 50,000 inches on the Earth's surface. And so this is information that we need to know, you know, when we're getting ready to use our protractor because we don't want to use the wrong scale of our protractor. So most topographical maps that we're going to find are going to be 1 to 50 like this or 1 to 25 uh, for land nav purposes. And then, you know, for larger, more strategic purposes, you may find 1 to 250 or 1 to 100. And then so on the civilian side, you may find some that are a little bit different, you may find like one to 24,000. Uh, so you just need to be cognizant of what the scale of the map is. And then moving over towards the center of the map, we have our actual map names. And then off to the top right hand corner, we have some addition and series and sheet information. And this is just used to you know identify uh, if we have to order some more. All right, so we're gonna flip these maps over and we'll look at all the information that's on the bottom. You know, and as you can see, there's just a ton of information on the bottom of these maps. So let's dive in. So we're gonna start here with a couple different boxes that we're given. Uh, this one is boundaries and joining sheets and then an elevation guide. And all they are is just quick references uh, that the cartographers give us to enable us to A, find other sheets or maps that join this one that we have, different major boundaries like uh, county lines and then elevation guide and then this elevation guide is a quick reference It's just that's all it is just a quick reference uh, So that as we're looking at the map we can understand the general slope of elevation change So here this is the Texas map. So in the southeast corner is lower information And then we can see as we're moving up towards the northwest it starts to rise up down here on the Washington map We have the same thing. So we have our boundaries Thurston and Pierce County all the adjoining sheets, so if we wanted to just fill up a wall, and then our elevation guide as well. And so both of these maps are red light readable, and then this one is also blue-green light readable. And so what that means is if you shine a red light on these maps, what you see in red, you're still going to be able to see. And I'll talk a little bit more about colors here in a minute. So here we have our scales, um, so that we can determine kilometers, statute miles, and nautical miles. And so whether you're using a sheet of paper, a string, or however it is that you want to measure a distance on a map, we can bring that back down here and determine how far it is. And the reason it shifts to the left from zero is because it breaks it down into increments of 10. So directly underneath that, we see uh, that our contour interval is 10 meters and all our elevations are in meters. 
uh, most of your maps are going to be you know using the metric system so that contour interval is hugely and greatly important man I, I can't tell you you need to know what that contour interval is so 10 meters you know it's roughly just to make it simple you know it's 30 feet um, but it's actually a little bit more uh, so what that is is the difference in elevation change between two different contour lines so 30 feet. So the closer these are together, the steeper it is, the further apart it is, you know, the more uh, gentle this and even the slope is. And so if that contour interval was, you know, 60 feet and you have a bunch of them put together, man, that's, you, you don't want to go over that. And so directly underneath this, you have our grid zone designator and 100,000 mile designating information. And so this is really important information. If you're trying to send information, you know, a, a location, a six or eight or 10 digit grid coordinate from this map to somebody else in another part of, of the world, you have to have this information. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, you know, once we start talking about grids. So if we slide back down here to our Washington state map, we have the exact same information. We've got our scale again, it's one to 50. You know, the elevations in meters and also a contour interval down here is also in 10 meters. And then the same uh, grid zone designation information. So probably one of the most important pieces of information that we're gonna find on a map is gonna be the declination diagram. And so the declination diagram is nothing more than a diagram that the map makers give us to understand the difference in the, in the relationship between grid north and magnetic north. This is called the GM angle, or grid to magnetic angle. And maps tell us, every single one tells us how to convert, and so every single one tells us how to convert from magnetic to grid or grid to magnetic. So always make sure that you relook at your map, even if you know and you've done it you know, a thousand times, just measure twice and cut once. So we can see here that the difference is 3.1 degrees. 3.1 degrees. Right, and so if we come back down and we look at our Washington State map that we have, and we also find a declination diagram, but here we find that our GM angle is 15.4 degrees. 15.4 degrees. And this is as of 2017, the one up in, or the one down in Texas is 2018. And it's really important to know the, the date because you want the most up-to-date information that you can have because over years and over time, you know, the magnetic interference is going to change where it's 15.4 degrees now. You know, five years ago is probably like 13 degrees. Five years from now, it might be upwards of 20 degrees. Now, the reason it's so much higher up here in Washington State as opposed or compared to Texas is because we're further north and east of Texas. So we're further away from the pole to the, to the west and then further north. And that's why we have a greater difference of angle here. Why this is important is because when you pick up a compass and your compass is always going to point towards magnetic north, so you need to understand that relationship so that when you, after you determine an azimuth, whether it's a magnetic to grid or grid to magnetic, you can take into account the GM angle to make sure that you're utilizing the proper azimuths. And so moving over, we're going to look at the legend information that we have here. Again, this is as of 2017. And so this is everything that the map makers wanted us to know that was more, maybe a little bit more specific to this map. Some populated areas, roads, railways, bridges, cultural features, different uh, information as it relates to vegetation and water. And if I move up here to uh, my Texas map, I'm going to find similar information, similar information. If there's a different color that was used on a map, you're gonna find it here. If there's something that was very specific that you're only gonna find on this map, you'll find it down here in the legend. All right, so in addition to all of this information, there's some standardized colors that we're gonna find on a map. So let's dig into those. All right, so uh, let's take a look at some of these colors a little bit closer. So the first color that I mentioned was black. And we see we have some black boxes, right? Black boxes. And these are man-made features are probably just you know just a bunch of buildings could be homes next up we have some red or red brown uh, because it's red light readable so it actually has some tinges of brown in it and those are also man-made features so black are man-made features and red is man-made features what's the difference it's too easy i'll tell you one is more important than the other so all your major roads are going to have some red in it you know if you have a major cultural feature uh, in the area, it may be labeled in red as opposed to black, but they're both man-made features. 
Next up we have blue, so we can see we have some marshy areas here. And I'm just gonna slide over, and here's a river or a creek. Slide over a little bit more, and we can see Hart's Lake. The blue's always gonna indicate water, whether it's there all the time, like this, or this river, or whether it's present some of the time, like this. Now, if I was trying to plan a route through here, I would want to be cognizant that I'm probably going to get wet. It may flood. So I need to be very aware of what the of where I'm at in the year, uh, as well as what I can encounter through here. And then, so next up, we have green. Right here we go. Look at all this green space. And so green is vegetation that provides some military or tactical importance. Typically, you're going to find... Uh, only vegetation over three feet. Now I have all this space in between, which is white. And white is not a color on a military map, they tell us. But look at all this white. If I come over here to Texas, look at all of this white. I got a lot of white. White is, in fact, a color on a military map. Or any topographical map, not just military maps. And so white is also going to be uh, designate vegetation or no vegetation uh, but if there is vegetation it's going to be less than three feet so you can think of a wide open prairie you can think of a golf course you know it's all green it's all green I promise you you know up here in Washington State this is nothing but green space uh, where all these white is uh, and the, the, the green, what we see in green here is also green space, except this is going to be a trees. And so I'm going to go into this uh, a little bit more in detail later when we start talking about terrain association. Uh, but what this green line is, is that is a tree line. That is a tree line. And I, I, man, I promise you, if I was standing right here and I was looking towards the west or the northwest and I looked in this direction, I would see this tree line right here. And I would see that that tree line is going to bounce back and cut a little bit in and then swing around. Crazy useful information right there. So next up is brown and I'm going to switch over here to uh, my map of Texas here. And we have a bunch of contour lines here, right? Have all kinds of contour lines. Let me set this down right there. Okay, so uh, the important thing to know about contour lines is that there are primarily two different types, index and supplementary and your index lines are going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit fatter, and they're going to tell you what the elevation change or what the elevation in meters is for that contour line. And then you use your contour interval to figure out, you know, what the next contour line is. But what they do is they give us and they help us determine what the ground actually looks like as it relates to elevation. So here we can see, uh, you know, these contour lines coming in as such. And if I learn how to read this properly, I can learn to figure out which direction is up and which direction is down. Even without seeing any, con any even without seeing an index line that tells me what the elevation is. And the way I can know that is by knowing how things work in the first place. And so what I mean by that is water is always moving downhill, right? So if I see that I have uh, some blue lines here, I know that water is moving down. And so when you see these shapes like this, if you connect the V here, if you will, that's going to tell you which direction things are coming from. So everything is coming from up here and then moving down. And then moving down. And sure enough, look, I got water. So what am I going to find? I'm going to find some vegetation. So if I'm down over here in this area, you know, just south of Grove, if I look off, you know, to the northwest and I see this green vegetation, this green tree line, I know that I'm going to find some water in there. Now I'm going to slide this up a little bit more. I'm going to look up here at um, Bread Tray Mountain. You can see it, that one there is labeled 250. So everything is rising up around it. So it's a big hill or, or what Texas is going to call a mountain. Right, but, it, but it's a hill. And if I come just a little bit over, we look at King Mountain. We can see again, you know, the, the, these contour lines are a lot closer together, right? So that's a steeper slope or greater elevation change that's happening here. So I want to be cognizant of that. You know, if I have to move through, I may want to go around it intentionally so that I can be more efficient. So in a future video, you know, we're going to look at um, contour lines and how to read maps a little bit closer as it relates to our major and minor terrain features. So I encourage you to hang out for that one as well.
So there you have it. There's all the basic information to know about colors. You know, next up we're going to talk about grids. So in a city, you know, it's really easy to determine our location. Streets are named and buildings have numbers. But in an undeveloped area or in a place that we're unfamiliar with, it can be a lot more challenging. And to manage this challenge, a uniform and precise system of referencing has been developed. And so the first method was simply drawing east and west rings parallel to the equator and north and south rings crossing the equator at right angles. And these lines are called latitude and longitude. The method is accurate as each ring is divided by 360 degrees and each degree into 60 minutes and then each minute into 60 seconds. And one second is equivalent to about 30 meters at the equator and becomes even more accurate the closer to the poles that you get. And so the next development was the Mercator projection named after, you got it, Mercator. Now it was a really good tool for navigation and able to provide true direction. The problem is, is that it's a poor projection of size. And so next came the transverse Mercator projection and the universal transverse Mercator grid or UTM. And so the UTM has been adopted and is a reference system that's used today uh, for the MGRS or military grid reference system. And it's a series of numbers to designate measurements and uses the metric system. And so there are 60 grid zones that break down the division of the Earth's surface and are always read right and up. Always, always, always right and up. They have a unique grid zone designation that we talked about earlier on the map and cover 100,000 meter squares. And so if you zoom in, there are always regularly spaced lines called grid lines and they're spaced at 10,000 or 1,000 meter intervals. And so all land nav maps will have grid lines at 1,000 meter intervals. And the grid lines run north and south and east and west and intersect at 90 degrees and are called grid squares. And so I'm going to drop uh, one piece of knowledge in your kit bag. Maybe it's something that you haven't learned before. And for this, we're going to look back at the map. All right, so in the southwest corner, this first grid line north, this one right here, we see off to the left that it's labeled 5193000. And so what that means is that this grid line right here is actually 5,193,000 meters north of the equator. Pretty cool, right? And if we jump over here to the Fort Hood map down in Texas, we see that this first grid line north right here is labeled 3431000. So that's 3,431,000 meters north of the equator. So I hope that's something new I put in your kit bag and you can pull that out next time you're looking at the map with one of your friends. All right, everybody, so there you go. Hopefully there's a little bit of knowledge uh, for your kit bag that you didn't have before. So whether you're using military topographical maps like this, whether you're going to the Forest Service, REI, NGS, wherever it is that you're pulling maps from, hopefully this is going to be a good foundation and basis for you to be able to learn your area a little bit more. Because I believe that map reading is a primal skill that we need for all kinds of situations. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hit the like and the subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date. And until then, we'll see you.